clean. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a minute since you've seen me, but today I've decided to show you the cleaning that I've done so far, sort of in like a compilation video. And then I'm going to hopefully get some more done today. I don't know how long this video is gonna be or if you're even interested. So if you are and you like it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I missed you guys, I've missed doing work but I just can't bring myself to do any work. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna start clearing, fresh start, new start, and hopefully it'll jumpstart my spirit um, for creativity. Cause I sit and I have tons of creative thoughts and just can't put them into action. So we're gonna take our first sip of coffee and then we're gonna get cracking. And hopefully you enjoy this, whatever it turns out to be. So hi everybody, <laughs> um, we have these boxes from the Dollar Tree that we're going to utilize. Uh, currently, if you've been around and you watched when we redid this room previously, um, just to give you an idea, if you weren't here, let me say that, if you weren't here, this is an old kitchen table from mom's old house. Um, and what we have on there is a black bookshelf from Walmart. They're like the $17, $18 bookshelves with the adjustable shelves. Um, bought it with this idea in mind to put it on my desk so I can have some vertical storage. What I had previously or what I have at this point is um, on the very top uh, Dollar Tree garbage cans. If I buy them for projects, I nest them. And then on one side, I put the like farmhouse buffalo check uh, ribbons that are open and on the right side I put the farmhouse burlap ribbons that are open um, and I have them sitting on some black and white buffalo check paper boxes that I got at Hobby Lobby for 50% off um, and it just looks real cute <laughs> so what I had on the first shelf originally was jars basically um, jars that were from uh, sauerkraut and cabbage, uh, red cabbage from Aldi. And I love the jars with the little check tops. Um, I have all different kinds of things in them. Two of them have buttons, um, two different kinds of buttons. There's wood beads. There's two different kinds of wood beads, uh, wood findings, clothespins, whatever you think of could go into like a jar. Um, that's what I have. Two jars are full of ribbon pieces because there are some projects where you just need ribbon pieces. So I keep them just like the anything over anything over four inches. Um, I keep if it doesn't if it's too little to fit back on the roll. Let's put it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the jars out of that shelf um, in front of the shelf where the burlap bags that I got from or boxes that I got from burlap.com. Um, so previously what was in those burlap bags were the jute, basically this one right here is all of the jute that I had currently been using plus like, cause there's different varieties. You know, we have like the thin one, the one that's like sisal, then we have the one that's orange and the ones that are green and red, um, just all the different varieties of jute. And the same thing with burlap. That's like all of the raw edged burlap or the burlap with the lace on it. I kind of kept in one of them. And the third one was just sort of a miscellaneous mix of random things. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take them and we're going to combine all of them into one of these black and white storage boxes. Um, I want you to know that if you're interested in this system, the black and white storage boxes fits perfectly on that top shelf. Basically, the, the shelves are adjustable, but the pegs that I have them, the drawers fit absolutely 100% snugly in there. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And if my memory serves me, I think there's four across. But you'll see it at the end of the video. Because I don't remember if there's three or four right now. Um, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm just deciding like if I need to pitch it, if I'm save hanging on to something that I probably won't use again or if it needs to be relocated, that's what I'm doing uh, first and foremost. And then I'm organizing it. I'm organizing into jute and burlap in these containers. Um, I mentioned on the very, very top that I have the paper boxes with the garbage cans on them. 
And then between them is the Farm Fresh Egg Caddy that we made. In the Farm Fresh Egg Caddy, I know you'll see it here in a minute, are the little Dollar Tree candle mason jar candle jars. That was a lot of jars, candles and jars in the one week. But you know the little candles that you get at Dollar Tree that have are in mini mason jars? Well, every time I use them, I wash them out and I love to store things in them. I keep them all over my craft area. They have rubber bands and beads and all these things. So what actually is in the Farm Fresh Eggs now is a couple of those. Some have things in them, some don't. Um, some are just empty in case I need extra storage. <laughs> That's me being excited that the bin fits perfectly up there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to switch around some of the jars, switch around some of the plan of what we're doing with some of the things, um, making things that we I thought we're going to need to be accessible, more accessible. Um, then I'm going to reevaluate because you have to every once in a while. You know, I guess I feel, feel like if we were making a ton of beaded garlands last year and this year we're not making a lot of beaded garlands, then the beads last year would be in the front of the, of the box, but now that they can move to the back of the box because it's not something we use as often. You get it, hopefully. But these jars fit four to a box and actually we will end up they fit four to the box and then we'll actually sit those little mason jars on top as well um this is me testing it out i have some back there um because i want to see like ooh, what fits um i just have a variety of dollar tree storage <laughs> i do like the candles in the mason jar my favorite because a you get a candle and then it's a cute mason jar it says mason the covers fit the two-part lids any small mouth mason jar lid fits them so um, you can really do whatever you want and play around with whatever you want boy do I have to dust that yeah we'll get to that <laughs> um, if you've been my channel for a while you recognize the uh, shout out week uh, pen, uh, paintbrush holder that we made from uh, this the week's nest um, anyway um, so we're going to continue um, I do have four of these boxes um, this particular black and white ones um, I think only three of them are good I can't really remember we'll have to stay tuned now I'm on the edge of my seat to see what will happen <laughs> I know I'm crazy I'm sorry so yeah when we redo the room um eventually i i we're going to talk about like jim and i have been um talking about i want to pull up the carpet um so we may redo the room when we pull up the carpet and when we do we may redo all the storage i'm not 100 percent sure yet i'm not exactly sure when we're going to do any of that so um but for right now this is what it is for right now um, and, and this organizing your storage stuff, getting crafting supplies, organizing your crafting supplies is an ever changing evolution. Um, it is just something that can be changed over and over, depending on your scenario, depending on what you need. Oh, apparently there's three boxes across three boxes fit, fit perfectly. That's what it was. And there's actually room behind them for some other things that we may need in the future. So, um, they they can slide all the way back so you can put stuff in front if you want to but i actually opted to put stuff behind it um instead so um let's see what was i just talking about oh the evolution of changing your storage <laughs> um perfect example is and i know i'm going really really far back but when i was in my early 20s i did a lot of paper crafts we made cards, we did rubber stamping with embossing, we did um, the, oh, I can't remember the name of it. I want to say it's filigree, but that's not right. But like the paper twirl, um, we just did a lot of different paper weaving, different, a lot of different paper crafts at the time. Then it evolved to like, I really got into sewing. I got like tons of fabric and then I joined a crafting group, which really wasn't a crafting group, but that's what it kind of seemed like. And then I got into like a variety of different crafts that I got to try to see what I'd like and to land on. And then I realized where my heart really was in sort of this farmhouse, country, crafting, painting 
thing that we do. So, of course, as that changes, we change with it. Um, as our desires evolve, you know, for a perfect example was I used to crochet like crazy and then um, and do needlepoint like nuts. But then when the arthritis kicked in and sort of that carpal tunnel thing, um, I just can't do that anymore. So it has evolved. I got rid of all of that stuff and it has evolved to something else. And of course, the reason I say that is because um, just like we're doing with the farmhouse, say, um, if I ever get over the buffalo check, which I probably won't because I had it for 20 years and I'll probably just keep it for the next 20 <laughs> What goes in that ribbon box may evolve as well, <clears throat> as you can imagine. So as my eyesight has gone, I'm doing a lot less fine painting. Um, hopefully, as it starts to improve, I'll be back at that. But I have to actually just admit that it might be time to possibly put that stuff to the back burner. And I know I don't want to and I don't want to admit it, but... We'll see. We're going to see. We're going to start fixing up the space, getting back into crafting and see exactly how I feel and how confident I am in my skills. Because <laughs> I will tell you, I ain't always that confident in my skills. So these boxes, if you're interested, were a set of three nesting boxes that I got at Cracker Barrel. They were on sale 50% uh, off $17.95. So I got them for roughly around $9 for the three boxes. I love them. The third box is actually little, and it's inside the big box um, as a sub-compartment. Um, and what I've had in here for, uh, you know, is sort of, the, the little one is sort of a mishmash, mod podge almost, of like different little things. And the big one on the right is um, the distressing ink and a couple of specialty glue bottles, as well as all of my sharps, um, extra exacto knife blades and the extra exacto knives and that kind of stuff. So we're going to redo this. Um, what I'm ending up gonna, gonna do is I'm going to take that really nice paint rack that we made, um, again on shout out week from uh, Fab Tax. Um, and we're gonna finally get rid of that because it doesn't hold enough paint. It did in the beginning, but then as my color wheel kind of expanded, with all the holidays, then it became just a little too small. Um, so we gifted it um, to someone who could use it for their kitchen. And uh, and we're going to put the paint in here um, instead. So just kind of like emptying it out. Don't be afraid to evolve again. Um, I want to be able to access the things that I need, but actually visually be able to see the other things as well. And that's a big thing. Um, another thing that I want to do is I want to get a different camera mounting system because if you guys don't know, <laughs> I shoot everything on my iPhone and I have a one gallon pickle jar with glass marbles on the bottom and a monopod that films all of this. <laughs> so I'm hopefully to get a new system soon. Like it's real professional. Um, you know, people always like you're a professional. I know people shoot on cameras. For me, cat. For me, like cameras are for taking pictures, not video. I have a camera. It's a really nice one. It takes video. I just can't. I can't. It's too much. This is perfect. What I'm doing works for me. Um, anyway, so what I've decided to do is make the small box not miscellaneous anymore, and to put all of the distressed inks and extra glue and stuff in that box. Um, then I'm going to put my tools in something separate and we're going to put all of our paint in the big box, okay? The tools are actually going to sit in that little box that was in the big box and it's gonna sit behind the medium sized box. Because you know, we made room behind things because we took out all those drawers, so. This way, everything will be there, it works. See how much more room I have for paint here. I can get all the paint off of that rack plus all the paint that's been sitting on my desk. Because it's been a lot. Now don't be mistaken. I still have a one of the QB boxes that are in my storage shelf. is got craft paint in it as well. I do have 
quite a few colors. Um, but these are all of the chalk paints that we've been using um, and the flat matte chalk light paints. Um, that's what this is and because that's mostly what we use now. Every once in a while we use a color from the uh, other box that we may make chalk paint with or we may use for detail work or may just use entirely by itself. So I feel like most of the paint that we can make uh, we can make most of the colors with the paints that I have. I don't think I have any blue, though, to be honest with you. I just realized I don't think I have any blue chalk paint. Um, so the little box is going to sit in front of the, um, the medium one, and then the big box is going to go on the left because I want it to be closer to me because I can access the paint better. And it's good because the paint will be next to the paint brushes because that actually kind of makes more sense anyway. So that's it. So I still have this to clean up. I really have to do something different with the scissor. I really wish I had one more of these plastic things. I'm going to always keep my eyes open in case one's stuck somewhere in the, in the heart, like the school, back to school sections or whatever. Um, because I have a can here that takes up a lot more room than those plastic things and those plastic things are perfect they just keep everything separated and like I, because that metal thing is there i don't have a place to put my jute whatever so um it just keeps everything like here let me clear up in front of it so you can see what it looks like when it's actually like put away right so it keeps everything in its place um this is actually supposed to be down here and so is this I must have pulled something out and pulled two things out. What's happening? I'm getting stuck on something. A cap. Sorry, I'm making I'm making a jiggly video that I didn't mean to. That's a paint pen. Oh, because it's new. All right, I didn't find a place for the paint pen yet. That's why. Paint pens go in there, but that's kind of full. Ah, we'll make a space. But anyway, um, it's still so much to do but i wanted to share it with you because today i just felt like sharing my journey what's going on i know oh hi i cut the bottom of my head off i know that you guys have been with me or those of you who have been with me forever and ever really know that this year was sort of a whole revamp i guess i staring off into the great unknown so this year has really been like a, um, I mean, it's been a challenge since Go in uh, last year when uh, YouTube launched their new uh, parameters with the COPPA deal and advertisers pulled out. And there's still plenty of advertisers out there, but I feel like they're being a lot more selective which is fine, but then I had to like redesign how I wanted my business to go or to the channel to go. And um, then just when I felt like we were gonna get back into the groove of things, like life turned upside down and just, it's never really been good. And I, and I don't, I know, I'm hardly the person who has had the worst 2020, obviously. Um, I've been blessed in so many ways but I wanted to just let you guys know that it's it's okay. It's okay to have a meltdown, a breakdown for things not to be okay. It's okay for things not to be okay. But what I'm learning and what I knew, but I'm having to remind myself constantly, let's put it that way, having to remind myself constantly that A, this is all temporary. And B, you have to do it anyway. So I've been recently thinking like, how would I be dealing with my work life if I worked outside of the home? Which I know working in your home and doing what I do has a whole different level to everything that's going on. But I, I, I've, I've been lately reminding myself, what would you do if you worked outside of the home? How would you be dealing with this? How did you deal it when your dad died? How did you deal with the post-hurricane Superstorm Sandy stuff? How did you deal with the loss 
of your mobility with your knee surgery? Like, how did I deal with all these things? And obviously, they're all very different scenarios than what I'm going through now and what we're all going through now. But there are similarities in some of them. And what I do is I try to find the similarity and then figure out, remember how I dealt with that similarity. So after the hurricane, we had a lot of loss. But I also had hope that it would be better when it was done, when it was all over. Until I, it wasn't, until I heard that it would be otherwise. So, you know, it's like I, I, I lived for the moment. Um, what I wanted to share with you that I really haven't um, talked much about openly um, on this forum, as opposed to just in private messages to friends, is currently, before today or most days, 100% of my energy goes to taking care of my health. Um, my eyesight, I'm trying to manage my blood sugar. I'm eating the lowest carb diet. Like I'm only getting carbs from vegetables and cheese and my blood sugar isn't really coming down. And it's really frustrating. It's coming down. It's just not coming way down. It's not all the way it should be, is what I guess I mean to say. I am intermittent fasting. I am dealing with hunger headaches. I know you shouldn't have hunger headaches, but it just sometimes happens. It's allergy season for me. You know, my biannual sinus infection, staving that off. Starting this new medication that is causing me to cough, like this dry cough, it's just so annoying. It doesn't happen all the time but it happens at like inopportune times like Jimmy's just about to fall asleep and then I'll have like a dry cough and we're in the middle of like a suspenseful moment in the show and then it's like it brings it on so I am I do rectify it um I do I am able to treat it at the moment drink water or suck on a lozenge or whatever but it's just like when it happens it's like oh another thing I'm having to deal with I know that this is nothing. I know people are fighting for their lives, fighting cancer, fighting autoimmune diseases, fighting all of these things. And I don't mean to sound like I'm ungrateful or complaining because that's the contrary, on the contrary. It's frustrating that I'm not getting the results that I expected, but I am still very grateful that I'm able to take care of myself um, because I work in the home and I'm able to take time off from work, which I'm not really able to take time off from work, but I think you understand what I mean. I hope you understand what I mean. Um, yeah, between that and, and everything else that's happening in everybody's lives, uh, it's just, it's just important to remember that there's a reason, there's a reason. So I, I, I sometimes feel like I've given up hope, but I know I haven't given up hope because I still eat everything I'm supposed to. And I still don't eat the things that I'm not supposed to. And I still move no matter how much it hurts. And I still stretch. And I said to Jimmy yesterday, I said, I am still stretching. I am still doing my stretches. I haven't done chair yoga in a hot minute. Got to be probably over two months now since my brother passed away, really. Actually, it was kind of like before that. I kind of slowed down a little, or I was doing it a little less frequently before that, but since I came home from Texas, I guess. Because I don't do it, I mostly don't do it when I'm away. Because I don't like to do it with people. So, like, you know, if I spent a lot of time with Lisa, then um, I would do it like, if she got up early, I would do it before I got out of the bed, or whatever. I don't know, I'm just, I'm all over the place. But anyway, um... I told him, I'm like, I'm not doing my, I'm only stretching. I'm bending over and touching my toes and I'm reaching up to the sky and that's it. And, but for me, every time I do that, I'm thinking I'm proud of myself because I'm doing that. I'm at least doing that. And every time I make a meal that's keto friendly or zero carbs or very low carbs, I'm thinking like, I'm proud of you. You did it. You made the right choice. You didn't get the regular ice cream out of the refrigerator. You didn't eat the devil dogs from the back of the freezer. You know what I mean? Like, I made the good choices. It's so easy to just go in there and have some sourdough toast and just be like, call it a day. 
sourdough toast with butter and jelly would sound really great right now, but I can't because I have hope. I have hope that things will get better. I have hope that my eyes will get better. I have hope that my heart will stay strong. I have hope that my kidneys will stay strong. I have hope that my joints will feel better because they did when I first started this journey, they felt so much better. And I don't know if it's just like the weather has changed and then I've had like the added weather component, but I, you know, I was like, I know it's gonna work because it worked already. Like I know it worked and that's the thing. So it's like, I have hope and that's the thing. I have to remind myself that every time I get down or whatever, I'm like, no, Jerry, this isn't, this isn't now, this isn't permanent. This isn't what this is all about. You can do this. Things will get better. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining on my husband because I'm not, I'm just concerned. He's been doing a lot of like snake eating because he's really, the doctor said he really needs to manage his sugar intake. And I'm not trying to call him out, so don't get on me because we talk about it. I don't do this stuff behind his back or whatever. But we talked about it and I'm like, I am not trying to control you, neither is the doctor, but I'm doing all of this so that we could have a future together. I need you not to quit on me. You know, like I want you to put in at least the same effort. It's really difficult, I told him. I'm like, it is really difficult not to eat a Little Debbie's or a Hostess Drake's cakes or whatever they are. It's really difficult to not choose sourdough French toast instead to choose keto zero carb bread French toast that you make at home. It's, you know, but it's what I do. I mean, it's what we do. It's, it's expensive, which is one of the great things about the intermittent fasting is that you don't have the time to eat the volume of food that you would have in the past. So it's making it easier to stay within budget, if that makes any sense. So I am probably going to shut the camera off and try to work on this table a little bit, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I have been up and down, as you saw, doing these boxes and I hurt my knee. I, I just twisted it, standing up and turning at the same time. But we'll see. I might, I might, might just keep going if I could do it from this chair I might just do whatever I can do from this chair so um I'm, pr I'm probably going to be reutilizing two of these again but I'm not 100% sure I really just have to see I have to see what I want to achieve here so that's it love you as always you take care god bless and I'll see you next time bye this is like part one of 37 parts. No, I'm kidding.